This is Red Green. In today's show, Harold runs for student council, Bill runs for cover, and I'm going to show you how to make a whole hairdressing salon. And now, here's the head honcho and the stomach honcho, the CEO of the IPB, if you like a man of letters, not that he reads them, my uncle, the star of the show, Red Green. this in. Hello, Harold. Is there anything you'd like to say before we get started? Maybe an apology? <laughs> no, thank you. I'll let my electronic editorial effects machine do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing that he do that while I'm holding a hammer. No. <laughs> big, big week up at the lodge this week. Old man Cedric has announced that he wants to get back to nature. And we're all in favor, and the sooner the better. <laughs> Old man Cedric is leaving the lodge? <laughs> that ought to bring the average age down by about 90 years. <laughs> yeah, and it'll have the exact opposite effect on the average IQ. <laughs> but he'll still be around, uh, Harold. Uh, he's bought a cottage up on Rock Reef Point. Uncle <laughs> Red, there are no cottages up on Rock Reef Point. There's just like, well, rocks and that reef and that little point. <laughs> <laughs> Just like your head, Harold. <laughs> oh, he's having a cottage built. By who? Anybody with a tool. <laughs> yeah, he bought one of them pre-flab kit cottages. <laughs> cottage company come up there and they dumped off a whole load of lumber and insulation and shingles and a little bag of silica gel with a note saying, some assembly required. <laughs> That's great. Oh, this is great, you know, because we can have like a barn raising thing the way, you know, the way the Quakers used to do. <laughs> Only without porridge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we figured we'd get all the guys up there, we'd get the cottage up in maybe less than a day, and we invited the wives to come up and, and bake pies, you know, but, of course, they're all away in Las Vegas at a networking seminar. I, I hope you read the instructions this time. Junior Singleton still has the scars from the hot tub kit. Oh, Harold, the instructions are a book. At old man Sedgwick's age, he doesn't have that kind of time. <laughs> we'd end up just building one closet and then burying him in it. I don't know, Uncle Red. We end up with nothing but trouble when you guys do things by the seat of your pants. Or in the seat of your pants. <laughs> ah, you worry too much, Harold. In a couple of hours, there's gonna be a cottage up on Rock Reef Point that'll knock your eye out. I'm sure it'll knock several people's eyes out. <laughs> One morning I arose from my bunk Everybody thought I'd been sprayed by a skunk They got the tomato juice and scrubbed me to death But it turned out to be my breath <laughs> This week on uh, Handyman Corner, got something a little bit different for you. I got an anniversary coming up and I wanted to get something, uh, something special. So I thought uh, maybe create some special gifts that you could uh, give to say to your wife or, or maybe your girlfriend or even that very special woman in your life or all three, you know. <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking to myself, well, for starters, maybe we could create our own special kind of lady shaver. Come on in here a minute, Harold, will you? And I'm thinking to myself, why don't we just use duct tape to say shave a leg because it takes a long time to shave a leg doesn't it, harold just kidding you all right so you got a piece of duct tape and then all of a sudden you got no cream to worry about no sharp blades and no messy cleanup you just stick her on there and just snap it right off like this <laughs> that didn't hurt did it hello <laughs> boy Looks like a throw rug. <laughs> oh well. How about making yourself a professional salon style uh, hair dryer? All you need is a, an old TV set, but uh, you gotta get the picture tube out of her there. You need a screwdriver. I guess I'll screw it in the back. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Save all the electronic components there because next week we're going to build a laptop computer. And you're also going to need an old uh, toaster, but all you need is the stuff out of the inside. Keep the, keep the case, because when we build the computer, uh, this will be our dual floppy drive. 
<laughs> All right, once we get the heater and the timer out of the toaster, get them mounted inside the TV set, we put that whole deal onto this uh, fancy looking desk lamp. And what we have there is a very professional looking uh, hair dryer. The type of thing you see in there is those real super duper salons that smell kind of funny. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep working on this. You guys get back to the show. And uh, when we come back in here, maybe we'll uh, try this whole rig out on Harold. I think it'll be Vidal Bassoon. Look out. <laughs> And now it's that part of the show where we get to expose those three little words that men find so hard to say, I don't know. <laughs> and today, claiming to be experts are my Uncle Red and, of course, Mr. Dougie Franklin. <laughs> Dear experts, I'm hoping you can answer a question which has been tearing my family apart and destroying my marriage. The question is this. What was the best car ever built? <laughs> that is a tough one, you know. That really is, I think, one of the core questions of our time. That strikes deep into the human psyche. Poh, I don't know. Ooh, that's tough. Which was the best car? Oh, yeah, Harold. A person's choice of car is a window to their soul. Now, <laughs> I have the possum van. I got my monster truck. Yeah. And you got your rollerblades. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I think it was Jean-Paul Sartre who really kind of best exemplified the existentialist view, you know? <laughs> now, of course, he, uh, he had one of them Renault kit cars, you know, the ones <laughs> that uh, you build yourself, you know, kind of an attempt to know the unknowable, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> Come with these instructions that had kind of a tautological logic loop, so, you know, he never did finish the rear suspension on that baby. But, uh, you know, he did come to the conclusion that essence precedes existence. Therefore, you know, I mean, best is really what you'd have to say is a subjective measurement based on the observer's frame of reference. <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so? So, the best uh, vehicle for Red here would be the possum van. For me, it would be the monster truck. And for you, it'd be them uh, water wings. <laughs> Roller blades. <laughs> but it's, you know, all, all you said kind of makes you wonder, you know, something like, what would Plato drive? <laughs> a Buick <with> Saber. <laughs> It is autumn. We walk hand in hand, my wife and I. Our love is like music. Now and then a string breaks. And what were once sharps are now flats. Our love is like a fretless bass. We've been playing it so long, we know exactly where to put our fingers. <laughs> All right, it's time to make beautiful hair. Now, I, I've used uh, some of the old uh, nine volt batteries here as the Mick Dandy hair curlers. And uh, I put them on with the duct tape, but you could use, uh, say, uh, hairpins or a glue gun or screws, you know. <laughs> is your hair wet there, Harold? No, it is not. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> now, just imagine that was a $50 cut, cream rinse, and set. Uncle Red, my, my head's tingling. Were those batteries dead? Don't worry about it, Harold. I'm gonna set the heat on the toaster now. And pop her down. There we go. Now, easy now, Harold. Easy, easy, easy. Set it right in there. Beauty, beauty. Now all we have to do, Harold, is uh, wait. You want your legs shaved while we're waiting? No, thank you. <laughs> okay, you're done. <laughs> all right, okay, all right, good. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there, oh. How do I look? I look okay, right? Oh. Well, let me just put a little moose on that. <laughs> What'd you do that for? Well, I was uh, frosting your tips there, Harold. So. <laughs> well, there you have it. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Is that water still dripping? Uh, no, that's back to acid, Harold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I went to ask Joshua for help, but he was all tied up on some land deal. Well, I guess that means you're going to be too busy to help old man Sedgwick. He's building a cottage up on Rock Reef Point, you know. Rock Reef Point is not zoned for cottage, Red. It's a bird sanctuary. What? Are you sure? Yeah. 
Try to buy it once for a landfill site. The lawyers were all over me. If he tries to build anything up there, the echo freaks will just make him tear it down. <laughs> well, Dolly, I better go tell him. Mm -hmm. How do I get out of here? <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'll help you. Man, I need a secretary real bad. <laughs> Before I could stop him, old man Cedric and the guys had the whole cottage built. He even had a roof on her. It wasn't on the top, but it was on there somewhere. <laughs> what a mess, too. Boy, look, there was a chimney that all zigzagged out the doorway, and there was wires on the bottom of the tub, which was out in the front porch, which was in the basement. <laughs> How's the guy supposed to close the window with all the plumbing coming out of it like that? Well, they're just not all that good at reading a blueprint. Well, maybe if they looked at it. <laughs> that might be a good first step. I think the real problem came, though, is when they divided the guys into two teams and made a race out of it. <laughs> Boy, that's, that's when they really started cutting corners there. Yeah, I think that's why so many of the rooms are triangular. <laughs> but don't forget, these are volunteers, Harold. And in the long run, volunteers are the most expensive workers you'll ever have. <laughs> so anyway, after they installed the shower in the kitchen, in the attic. <laughs> they wanted to fire up the gas water here, and when they turned everything on, uh, water was coming out the gas line, but nothing was coming out the water line. So Junior Singleton went down into the basement to see who had hooked up the gas, and as soon as he hit the switch, he remembered the answer was nobody. <laughs> As the whole place exploded. Is that what that was? <laughs> I thought they were blasting in the quarry again. I, of course, you know, I did wonder when I looked up and I saw that cottage in the sky. <laughs> Yeah, you don't see that too often. Well, it's only the second time this year. <laughs> but there's a good side, because now old man Cedric doesn't have to tear the cottage apart just to comply with the zoning bylaw. Although they may charge him with littering. <laughs> Poor old guy, I guess he's really upset, huh? Well, he's not a quitter, Harold. If he was, he would have died long ago. <laughs> during the War of 1812. <laughs> but as he was sitting there in that big pile of splintered wood, with little tufts of pink insulation around him, <laughs> blowing pieces of shingle out of his nose. <laughs> a big blue heron flew over and dropped a wake-up call on his bald spot. <laughs> and he got an idea. He's thinking, okay, if Rock Reef Point has been made into a bird sanctuary, what he'll build as a home is a great big nest. <laughs> We like burgers and beef ribs and rump roast and steak. We like uh, sirloin and T-bone that makes us go snake. We also like leather for shoes and for belts. You always hurt the one you love. We're obviously quite fond of cows or wouldn't be slaughtering them so bad. <laughs> I noticed my thumbnail was real long, so I thought I'd uh, get some of the bird droppings off the top of the van. <laughs> and then Bill came over. Never mind, Bill, I'm fine. Yeah, I'll be right there. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> it's time for Adventures with Bill. Now, what Bill wanted to show us about uh, this week, which I didn't realize, was how to survive in your car. And believe me, surviving in Bill's car is a challenge. We were way behind the lodge, out into the bush there, and I don't think Bill was driving. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so now what we're saying is you're stuck. Well, we're not saying it. We are it. Anyway, uh, Bill's saying you can survive stuck in a car. You can, all right, you can rub your stomach. No, no, I see. You can feed yourself. You get a drink. Oh, oh. <laughs> You get a drink out of the rat, apparently. So you just reach over and undo the thing there. It might be hot filament. <laughs> no, it seems fine. And you put the straw in there. He says that works. I don't know, though. It seems... <laughs> I think you got a bit of a short straw on that one, Bill. Yeah, yeah. But you want to be spotted from the air. That's the big thing. Nobody's going to come driving by out in the field. So you put, like, a sign. This is on your radio aerial here. It says, uh... 
Yeah, it helps. It's, it's right in front of my face. I can't see. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, maybe if you can't put it on the radio aerial, then put it on your door handle somewhere where, again, as I say, it can be spotted right from the air. Oh. Oh. You want to be doing this with a better car, I think. Now Bill's going to cook us up. He's got some corn there. He just wraps it up in the tin. we got some fish. Yeah, some cans, assorted cans of stuff. And uh, more fish. And uh, some pa. What are those? Oh, those are wieners. Okay. You're putting everything in there. That's a, that's a running shoe there, Bill. <laughs> and he gets that all in there and uh, stuffs it all around the engine. The parts that get hot when you turn the engine on. And he's gonna, the idea is he's gonna, of course, gonna start her up. What's that? Oh, bangers and mash. <laughs> he's gonna put that in there, and uh, now when he starts her up, the manifolds and what have you, he, oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. All right, so, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I think he's got the rubber panel in those uh, coveralls. <laughs> now he gets in there and he starts her up, and uh, she's running, running real good. Well, two of the cylinders are, anyway. And the engine's getting real good and hot, and uh, I open her up. Whoa! Whoa! It's movie time. And, by golly, we have been spotted from the air. And all this time, I thought Bill had no idea what he was doing. You're a genius, Bill. You are a genius. <laughs> this next part of the show is for the young people who apparently can stomach this kind of thing. Here's Harold. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to the first episode of a 52-part series entitled... Quest for the Presidency. <laughs> okay, yes, I know it says guest for the presidency, but, you know, I couldn't find a Q, so I had to use a G. Okay? Don't. Okay, well, I mean, guess for the president would be pretty stupid, right? So, okay. Okay, well then... Join me um, over the next 52 weeks as I, I will be throwing my hat into the ring. Um, well, if I had a hat, I would throw it into the ring. And at that time, I'll be running for the presidency of my very own high school. <laughs> and perhaps you more advanced students will be able to learn from my mistakes as I run through the primaries, which will include junior kindergarten, right up to the stump on the election day where I will convince the electorate that I am truly the only candidate with enough blanks on my social calendar to handle such a high, high office. <laughs> so, let me say this about... Carol, you never make it with your marks, okay? Presidents have to have a high education. <laughs> what about Abe Lincoln? He wasn't uh, much of an educated guy. He was assassinated, Harold. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I could be guest for the president. I guess it must be uh, pretty confusing to be a teenage boy in this day and age with all the TV ads saying sex, 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 and, and your friends saying sex, 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 and the music videos saying sex, 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 and your parents saying, how was school today? <laughs> a lot different in my day. You know, in my day, the girls wore skirts and dresses, and if your girlfriend said the F word, it was fiance. <laughs> we put girls up on a pedestal, and it wasn't just to look up their dresses. But I guess we were wrong, because in the last 20 years, the, the women have gone for the equality thing, and uh, they've almost worked their way down to our level. Almost. Although I have yet to see a woman actually scratch herself at the table. <laughs> I don't get it, though, because uh, being equal to, say, a member of Possum Lodge uh, is pretty much an insult. <laughs> but I don't understand it. And again, if I understood women, I wouldn't be where I am today. Thought I'd drop in on Ranger Gord and ask him about this nest business and make sure that he didn't panic when he saw old man Sedgwick's cottage blow up this morning. What did, what did you think when, when old man Sedgwick's place exploded up at Rock Reef Point this morning? Exploded? Oh, yeah, yeah. Didn't you see the flame and the smoke? It, it burned for over an hour. Can't catch them all, huh? <laughs> no, no, I guess. Anyway, on this nest thing, you know that, that bird, the, the, the blue heron there? Now, wh what do they do to their nest to get it ready for the winter? Well, uh, most birds will only be in the nest in the springtime for mating. Can I say mating on TV? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if a nest is only for mating, I don't think old man Cedric needs one of them. 
No, no, no. no. I, I don't see him having a, a woman in his little nest. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see him dating a real live woman. <laughs> no, he's out there alone. Alone. Mm -hmm. Staring at the clouds. Till every cloud reminds him of a woman named Gretchen. Uh, Gretchen. All right, all right, all right, all right. Gretchen. All right. Who could have shared his nest and laid his eggs and hatched his chicks? All right, all right. No, never mind. Go on. All right, Gordon. No, don't worry about. It. Okay, Gordon. Thanks very much. That was very helpful. And 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 listen, we'll see you again soon. How oh, soon? Soon. What exactly? Soon. That's all. Sooner than never. How's that? Okay. <laughs> I can remember that. All right, good. I'll see myself down. Yeah. Don't follow me, guards. I'll watch you go. <laughs> well, old man Cedric has uh, run into a few problems building his big nest. He's been studying the heron and trying to imitate him exactly. But he's found that his false teeth uh, make it real hard to pick up some of the bigger two-by-fours. <laughs> Did he not think to use his hands? Does this not occur to him? Well, he's a bit of a purist, you know, Harold. He, he wants his nest to be authentic, you know, for resale value. <laughs> and if the heron is building his with a beak and about the same size brain, he should be able to do it, too. <laughs> so he took the false teeth out to get himself a better grip with his gums, and the heron swooped down, picked the teeth up, and flew off. <laughs> and golly, there is nothing so unnerving as seeing a large water bird flying over the lodge with a big toothy grin. <laughs> You know, Uncle Red, I heard that old man Sedgwick came to his senses and he's completely abandoned this nest idea. Well, you're half right. He abandoned the idea. But he's going to build himself a whole new, different type of home. Going to be all season, all year round. And still keeping the back to nature theme. He's going to build a great big beehive. <laughs> oh. Well, why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> And if that doesn't work out, he's going to get 90 miles of yarn and spin a cocoon. <laughs> or he may end up digging an anthill. <laughs> man, oh, man, let's just hope he's never heard of the dung beetle. <laughs> oh, there's a call to meeting, Uncle Red. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be right down. Well, on a personal note, if my wife is watching, you know, I, I take a look at old man Sedgwick and... Uh, and I, I have to think how lucky I am, you know, to be married and, and to have a real nice home and, and not to be anything like him. And I, I really feel that I, I have you to thank for that. And, and I want to just show my appreciation. So right after the meeting, I'm going to come straight home and I'm going to build, just for you, a combination garden shed and bird feeder out of waffles. <laughs> Don't mention it. Okay. So the rest of you, thanks very much for watching. And on behalf of Harold and myself and the whole gang out here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice.